I was about 13 or 14 in 1968 or so when I failed to finish this movie. For some reason, I was never able to manage the spaceship exteriors. Anyway, it's called Specialist, based on a 1953 science fiction short story by Robert Sheckley. We're introducing the characters here. Uh, they are all specialists, as you can see. Uh, incidentally, Sheckley, strangely enough, was briefly married to the sister of Pastor Buck Naked. Anyway, in this show, a crew of aliens who rely on cooperation between specialized species rather than mechanical devices for space travel lose an essential member, and the only species nearby which could replace him are humans. They have to convince a human to join them. Uh, each individual is a different race adapted to their role. But their uh, galactic deep space cargo bio ship is being blown off course by a photon storm. Look at that incredible violence of the photon storm. Again, the exteriors of the spaceship, I never managed to get right. Um, <laughs> this was fun for animating and had lots of creatures. Uh, the one with all the hands is Doctor. That's Talker. He puts uh, nerve tentacles into everyone's heads. Oh, and they've lost their pusher. Um, uh, they find their only member of the pusher race, which allows the ship to travel faster than light, is dead. So they're all really sad. And um, a Thinker says they have to go find another pusher or they're, they're going to die. They won't be able to travel faster than light. Uh, before dying of old age, they won't be able to reach home. So they fly around. There's a planet of walls. The walls are all alive. They see that planet. Walls flying around. The walls like to get drunk, by the way. They're kind of rowdy. Uh, and they go from planet to planet, and the eye sees things for them. And Talker sends the sights to the other creatures. Oh, here's take two. Uh, from from uh, Talker's nerve cells carry eyes sight to the other parts of the ship. Oh, there's a planet of feeders. There's some feeders down there, but that won't do them any good. They got to find a pusher. Um, they uh, locate a planet of primitive pushers. And of course, it's Earth. Bye-bye, um, says the feeders down there. That won't do them any good. I guess I was going to put the spaceship in there somehow. So they're, they're having the doldrums. Uh, they can't find a pusher planet yet. But I guess now they're excited because they, they found one. And uh, anyway, they try to communicate with the the man that they find, which we'll soon see. Oh, look, he's looking, I is looking out the window, and there's the man they find, who's actually a 13 or 14 year old boy, played by famous actor Douglas Smith. Oh, and there's Feeder's uh, nerve trying to get into Doug's head. It looks, <laughs> there's monsters, a talker and a Feeder standing there. Oh, what's wrong? Why is he running away? I have no idea. I'll send, I'll try to communicate with him some more. And so this wire, oh, it's tripped him. This must be tough nerve cells. Okay. Um, he's so violent and resistant that they're forced to bring him aboard the ship to try to reason with him. <laughs> Good luck, a human. Uh, the crew, used to close cooperation, find it hard to understand his mistrust and fear. Well, welcome to Earth. But however, those walls are pretty tough. Now, Talker is still trying to communicate with him, but he, he won't let that nerve into his brain, or the back of his neck, or wherever it goes. The doctor is trying to talk him into something. Well, they're, they're discussing what the problem is.
they have a lot of discussing. I don't remember what the script was. The doctor is trying to be friendly and help this guy, but of course he's he can't trust aliens, and so he's completely scared. The doctor is just distracting him while Talker sneaks a communication nerve around back and gets him right in the socket. Oh no, fiend without a face. But uh, I don't know what the heck this guy's doing. He's demonstrating what he can do with his tentacles. He ties them in a knot and then he can't get them untied. I think I did that just because I wanted to animate it. Well, they're out in space and they've got to get this pusher to push, but he didn't know how to push. Look, he's got a growth of beard. They've had him for a few days. <laughs> it wasn't a real growth of beard. Uh, a feeder is getting some crud out of the accumulator, and which changes matter and turn it into a steak, a black and white photo of a steak, a steak. So after eating, he feels a little better, and the the talk talker is trying to get him to understand how wonderful the galactic civilization is, and how great and happy the pushers of Earth will be when they join the Galactic Federation, but these monsters are just so, so darned ugly. And uh, so they, they, anyway, I, there was some nice dialogue in the uh, short story about the nature of humans being so distrustful and paranoid and hostile and how the Galactic Federation of Cooperation is so wonderful. and. I guess there's some sort of Rod Serling type discussion going on here that probably might have been fairly heavy if we had things like sync sound. So they're begging this guy to try. Oh, that's the engine. He's weeping. The brain is just flat. And of course, the eye <laughs> gets a little bit of uh, corn syrup down his front. He's so sad because they're stuck on Earth. They can't travel through space. They can never go home until the pusher learns how to push. Damn the pusher man. <laughs> he won't push. Oh, look at outside so far away. Uh, finally, uh, talk, talk, talk. He finally gets it, basically. He just can't. He refuses to understand that anybody could be nice out there in the universe. And then he, he, he's trying to push, and it doesn't work. We show the spaceship just sitting there, except we never should see it. And then he, he finally squeezes one out. He gets the light. He sees the light. He gets it. And they fly through outer space. And that's the end of the movie. And yay. It was wonderful. However, like I say, I never finished the movie. The end.